Hey guys, it's Aaron. I want to take a look at an extension today that makes something much easier than if you're doing it manually. And uh, the extension we're going to look at is Faber, and the process we're going to talk about is exporting data from SketchUp to a CNC machine. So it is totally possible, I know there's people out there who are doing it right now, uh, just exporting files and, and taking CAD files over and creating uh, G code for their CNC. It can be done, absolutely, that's true. But using something like Faber makes it almost too easy. Let's take a look. Okay, so first thing I have here is the extension warehouse page. Um, this is where you can actually find it right through the software. So if you do just go to the extension warehouse button, type in Faber, you can get to this and then that will actually link you off to the site. If you don't do, if you don't want, if you want to just go straight to the site, the site name is getfaber.com um, and that will get you in there. This is not a free uh, extension. It is a paid extension. Um, but it does offer a 15 day trial so you can try it out and if you are using a CNC machine if you have your own or you have access to one through a makerspace or work or something like that um, man I I mean I I can't see how you wouldn't want this let me I'm gonna stop talking about it and we're gonna go use it um, this could be a short video it's it's really very easy <laughs> all right I want to go ahead and close extension warehouse and here I have a sample model this is actually a model that you can download through the get Faber website we'll look at that in just a second um, but it is a stacking nesting crate. So uh, it's designed to, so if I look at this piece over here, it is designed, you can see, so the top and the bottom fit together like that, and you could actually stack these up. What Faber is going to do specifically is take this information once it's created and make it very easy to get all the data together and export the file for your CNC. What Faber doesn't do, I just, just, just let you guys know, it's not going to come in and make these designs for you. You do still have to be capable of generating these designs. So you as a designer need to know things like how much tolerance do, you need, do I need to leave? So you can see down here, this is designed with a gap in mind to allow these pieces to slip together. Um, the overlaps here, see there's a slight cut right there. That makes it easier to slide these two pieces together. That's the kind of stuff that, that you do still have to bring as a designer. You have to know how to do that. But, uh, you know, honestly, as a designer, that's kind of the fun part of doing this, is making it, figure out how they go together. The part that is not the fun part is now taking this 3D model, getting it into a flat orientation, organizing it, and then sending the data out, getting it into CAM, getting a file generated, and then put that into your CNC machine. That's where Faber comes in. So, I don't know if you guys noticed, but the UI for Faber is on the screen right now. That's right. See this little tiny button? This is all there is. It's, it's the easy button. So once I have the pieces made, I, I do have them all grouped together. So there's one group here, and then in the group there's several components. Um, so I can just actually select this one thing and hit this button. So what this is going to do is it's actually going to call up a web service, which is going to prompt me for a little bit of information and help me generate this the data for cutting this all at once. Watch this. So I'm going to hit this button. Faber is going to come up. And first thing it does is it does ask me information about what I want to, you know, how am I going to do this? So it tells me, okay, all my pieces seem to be half inch, which is correct. These, these pieces I modeled were all half inch. Um, it can, it's going to ask me now what's the machine you want to put in, or you want to cut on. Oops, sorry, I went a little too far. Whoa. I'm, I'm scrolling like crazy. Uh, so I'm going to pick a full size machine. Uh, what material am I going to cut? This is going to be, um, uh, well, we'll just have, we'll just be wood, uh, bit. So I can pick which, which bit I want to actually use out of the bits that, uh, are supported. And then I can also put in a sheet size. So how big is the piece I'm going to cut? Um, so let's say it's four by eight. So we'll put those numbers in there and uh whoops sorry uh 96 inches by 40 48 inches 
And check this out, this is kind of cool. If I scroll down here, it has gone through and figured out what all of my pieces are. And it's figured out because they were components, it's figured out, oh look here, check this out. There's two of these, there's one of these bottom pieces and two of these side pieces. So it figured out all the pieces, three parts, making up a total of five. Um, and what I can do here, this is kind of cool, because I can actually come in here and I can say, let me see what that design looks like. And it will, it's a little ways away from the axis, but uh, it'll show me basically a pseudo rendered, I guess we could call it, view of the pieces, but I can actually hover over them and see where each of those pieces are. So really cool. So um, let's come back here and let's go ahead and let's manufacture. I'm gonna hit let's go. And check this out. This is the cool part. This is what I was saying. I'm done. Look at that. I'm finished. Uh, so what Faber has done at this point is it's taken that full sheet. So I told it to make that big four by eight sheet. It's laid my five pieces on it in a corner, put them close to each other, not, not touching. You know, there's a little bit of a gap here. So my tool path doesn't cross over or cut any piece that shouldn't. And I'm, I'm, I'm like done. It's weird. If this had been a smaller sheet, so say I have a, a small CNC, a desktop, something like that, where I can't do all five pieces at once, it'll actually come up with multiple sheets right here and I can just page through each of those. Um, right now, I can pick on one of these and it'll tell me a little bit of information about them down below. Um, if I want to, I can actually unlock editing sheet. If I do that, it will let me come in here and manually move these pieces around. So, if I don't know if there was a reason that I wanted to go this way, maybe I knew I have another piece I want to cut and I want to just stack that up that way. I can turn off or turn on editing and move those. Once that's done, once I'm in the other thing. So if I look in here, I have my my exterior cuts here in pink, my interior cuts here in blue, and then I have these lines for the tool path. And I don't know if you noticed that when I moved that piece, it went through and it recalced the paths to cut everything. So again, it's already doing all of that for me from my 3D model. From here, all I have to do is download code and I am good to go. So if you do wanna learn more about this, I do recommend heading over to getfaber.com. Uh, from here, you can get all the data about it. You can get a 15 day free trial. Uh, you also have the ability to download uh, some of these models that Eric over at GetFaber has created and you can play with these, see how they work. You can learn a lot from this too, especially, I, this is an incredible model, the X table, check that out. It actually shows, you know, it's a good example of how to design uh, plywood pieces so that they all interact and connect together properly. Um, it is an awesome, awesome website. It is an awesome extension. I highly recommend checking it out. If you're like me, I don't, I don't actually have a CNC machine. I've uh, had an opportunity to see one. I haven't done a lot with it. Um, but one of the things that's always limited me in, in uh, going forward, I have access to them through a local makerspace. I've never gone and done it because um, I didn't know this part of it. Faber actually takes out that whole back end and lets you just take your SketchUp model and go cut it. So. Check it out if that's something that you think is worth trying, 15 day free trial and probably well worth it if it's something you're gonna do regularly. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. We create several videos a week, uh, including occasionally extension inspections like this one. And you'll be notified of each and every one of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please leave us a comment. Does this extension look good to you? Is there another one you think we should take a look at? We like making these videos a lot, but we like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.